Hi guys, thank you so much for being here and I really do hope you're doing well. Guys, I want to talk to you about this. It's a paracord knife and I'm going to say it off the bat, I always thought that paracord knives were a gimmick, just some kind of natty way to try and sell a knife by wrapping some extra paracord around it. I could not have been further from the truth. I've learned a lot about these knives and I've got a new appreciation for them. In fact, they hold one very important survival benefit that I want to talk to you about a bit later on. Okay guys, let's get into the features of this knife. First of all, we'll deal with the sheath. The sheath is made from a nylon material and it is reinforced where the most wear will be with plastic. You can see the plastic reinforcement in there. It's a blackish material. It's also reinforced where you'll be inserting the knife in this, on the inside of this section here. Now to get to the knife, you undo the Velcro locking mechanism and remove the knife. Always remove the knife from the spine, which is the, the non-blade side of the knife, just because you can't be sure uh, over time, especially if things like this will wear away and you don't want to have your knife cutting into your fingers when you remove it. So always remove from the rear of the sheath. Now looking at the actual knife, you'll see that it is a very attractive matte black finish and it is full tang, meaning that it is metal from the tip right down to the pommel here. You'll also notice that there's sort of a, an edge here, serration, but it's not actually serration, it's more like jimping. And that essentially is um, increased surface area where you can place your thumb for more precision work and get some grip. Here we have a front and a rear quillen. They prevent your hand from slipping forward off the handle onto the actual blade itself, very important. Now the handle of the knife is wrapped with paracord, giving it extra grip and comfort, very nice in fact. The paracord wrap can be removed, of course, to give you a full length of paracord. And it finishes in a lanyard. Now most people try and put their hand through a lanyard and then feel that they're safe using an item. The problem with that is that that often leaves enough slack for your hand to come into contact with the blade. You don't want that to happen. So the way I always recommend it is if you put your hand, your fingers, sorry, through the lanyard hole and make it small enough that when you grip the handle, there is no slack. There is no way my hand can go up into this area. There's just not. There's no way physically that that can happen. So I can grip that knife and if I slip, I know my hand is not going to be compromised. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you some feathering. If you're not familiar with feathering, essentially it's cutting off and processing small slithers of wood so that you can use them in fire lighting. I've got a piece of wood here. And as you can see, I'm going to stand up to get myself a bit more pressure. Turning my body away from the blade in case I slip. I don't want to slip and cut myself with this in anything like my femoral artery because it's going to not end happily applying the lanyard it's uh it's doing it's doing all right it's not perfect i think this type of knife needs sharpening when bought from the store um not many knives that i've ever come across are perfectly sharp from purchase but this isn't too bad actually um i'd say it will still need a tiny bit of sharpening, but let me bring this a bit closer and show you what I've been able to do there. So I've been able to curl up some pieces of wood that would easily take a flame and make fire lighting a lot simpler. The next thing I want to show you is a process called battening. It's also known as batoning, and essentially you're splitting a wood using the knife as a wedge. You're placing the knife over a piece of wood and then using another separate stick to whack one side of the knife as you push down with the other. Please do not take this as a definitive guide to battening. Do your research. There are lots of YouTube videos that are going to teach you exactly how to do this process in a way that is not going to damage your knife. So on we go. This is a, a very knotty piece of wood, which is rule number one of things not to do when battening but we'll, we'll press forward anyway so I'm placing the knife over the piece of wood applying force on this edge and it split the wood it didn't do a full split down the middle as you can see but um, if I would have been able to get a central 
um, a, a central line on that piece of wood, it would have split through the weakness rather than just shearing off this piece. But that piece would be very useful if you needed to start a fire. So very good for battening. The full tang is going to enable you to push down and get some effective force going. In order for me to show you the next cool thing, I need to unwrap the paracord from the handle, which is the perfect opportunity to show you how simple it is. I need to simply undo this lanyard knot, and once that's undone, unwind it through two holes here, and it will just come off. So let me just do that right now. Always being mindful of where the knife blade is. There we go, so that's the knot undone. Unweaving it now through the top hole, like that. And then the second hole here, I've got one and two. Now that that's undone, this will literally fall off itself, watch. Oh, there we go, just getting caught on a, a little piece. There we go. Nice and easy, all of that paracord available to you. There's about two meters there. Okay guys, now this is possibly one of the coolest things that you can do with the paracord knife. I found myself about a metre's worth of twig. It's not the best, but um, it's all I've been able to find in my local environment on a quick search. It has a notch taken out of it already. If it didn't have a notch taken out of it already, I would use the knife to baton my way down to a certain level from there. I'd baton down and then I would take the knife this way and then baton Bang, 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 like that to knock out that groove. What am I going to do with that groove then? I'm going to place my knife on there, like so, and then wrap it with paracord. I'm going to do that right now. I'll speed that up for you. Okay, so there we have it. I've lashed this on. You could use any type of lashing, really. Uh, the lashing is just to keep it very tight and secure um, against the piece of wood. The notch stops the knife from moving down when it impacts from this direction. But that is solid. Look, that is not going anywhere. Why do you want this? Okay, I want you to imagine a scenario where you're in a survival situation. For whatever reason, you've injured yourself. Nighttime is coming and you need to protect yourself. If you have your knife and a predator is coming, yes, you can use that knife, but they're gonna be quite close to vital organs, they're gonna be close to you, and they can do some damage to you. If you can get this on a stick or a spear like this, you've got range to be able to attack from a distance, and that's gonna mean that you're gonna end up safer in the long run, and you may live another day and find rescue. Okay, and get rid of that stick. That leaves us with the paracord and the knife itself. We want to recreate the handle. So the way to do that, first of all, we've got to place our knife down safely. We're going to grab the paracord, make sure there's no ties or twists in it. We're going to find both of the loose ends. We're going to hold on to those in one hand and we're going to put our finger in between those two loose ends and just go all the way down until you find the natural middle of the cord. That middle is actually going to be where we start the wrap from. We're going to pick up the knife. We're going to place the knife between the two ends of the cord at that middle point here, just underneath the quillens. And all you're going to do, and this is the only move that you need to do for most of this until you get to the end, is you're going to twist those two bits of cord like this, always in the same direction, once, and you're gonna twist it again. That's all you need to do. Pull it tight and bring both end, ends of the cord to the other side of the knife and below, if we consider the, this bit the top and this bit the bottom, below the first piece of cord work that you've done. So we're gonna do that again. We're gonna twist again in the same direction once and twice bringing the bits of the paracord to the other side of the handle. I'm going to twist now once, twice, pulling it nice and tight each time, bringing the paracords around the other side of the handle, make, making sure everything's pushed down, twisting once, twice, 
power cord to the other side of the handle and repeating that process, making sure everything's neat along the way. I'm going to speed that up for you right now, but it really is that simple and I'll show you how to finish off when we get to this end. Okay, so when you've wrapped up to the two holes here, you're simply going to go from the opposite side of wherever you've just wrapped and push through the two pieces of paracord through the first hole that you come to, which is the lower one in this shot. There's also a little lip here, which helps you to keep the paracord just on the handle, leaving the pommel free. So it's simple enough to get them through. First one goes through nice and easy. Second one might be a bit of a, a wiggle required, but should go through no problem. Uh, it's getting a little stuck there. There we go, and he's through. And then all that's required now is that you're going to push it from the same side that you're on, you're going to push it through that remaining hole there, both of the pieces of cord. So we'll do that, push one through, nice and easy. And the other one will go through. Again, a little bit of a wiggle. But no problem. Then all that's required now is to tie your lanyard knot and that will create the loop of, on your actual lanyard. I would always recommend doing it about a hand's worth. So tie it, if you put all four fingers in so that this, the pommel is against this part of your hand, you wanna be tying the knot roughly where the top of your fingers end. So I'll do that right now. Simply, simple knot, you're gonna take both ends, wrap them around into a loop and pass the ends back through, nice and simple. There we go, that's roughly the perfect size for my lanyard. I can now put my fingers to that lanyard, use the knife safely. If you've got excess, I recommend keeping it on. You always want more paracord than less paracord. Um, there are ways that you can tuck it out of the way if that becomes a problem, even making more knots. You've seen this in action. Let me talk you through some of the benefits. This is a great low cost knife. Let me tell you, if you're a beginner, this is perfect for you because you can take this outside, you can baton with it, and if you break it, it's gonna take a lot to break this, but if you were to break it, it's not gonna cost you the earth to replace. Whereas if you bought a, uh, a more expensive bushcraft knife and they range into the hundreds of pounds, if you break that as you're practicing your knife skills, that's really, really gonna hurt you in the pocket and it's gonna make you cry. So this is perfect for those starting people. If you're an experienced outdoors person, let me tell you, this is a great companion knife. You keep this on your side and you don't need to pull out a massive knife just to cut, cut a bit of cord or do some detailing. You can just pull out this small companion knife and just do whatever you need to do and pop it back without any fuss. As you remember, this is full tang, which enables you, with the pommel being uh, a metal pommel, you can place nuts, seeds, hit them, break them open. If you need to process tinder by breaking it down, you can put it down and literally tenderize the hell out of it you have that option available to you you saw the makeshift spear now if you do need to protect yourself in an outdoors environment you may be injured you it may be becoming uh, nighttime there may be animals that are looking to to prey on you you can protect yourself by elongating this knife and keeping your distance from those animals by attaching it to a piece of wood as i demonstrated earlier the other great thing is that when you remove the paracord, so for example, you may have had an accident, as I mentioned before, you need to stem that blood flow. You remove the paracord, you wrap yourself up nice and tight, you can still use this knife because even though the, the paracord bit is removed, it's still a fully functional knife. And I think that's very, very important. I got this knife not really knowing what the appeal of this type of knife was. Now that I have it, I actually see that it's a great utility item and you can do some things with it that you just can't do with fixed handled knives. The fact that it's a secondary knife for me means that I can be a bit more riskier with this knife. It means that I'm not putting my main knife 
um, in, in compromising situations where I may, I may need that knife or I may break that knife. So I'm able to do a lot with this knife because it is a secondary knife. Um, really not what I expected. I'm very glad to have it as part of my kit though. Buy this and more at meanandgreen.com.